does. Okay, how's that? <laughs> you guys are going to have to let me know because I have literally no idea. I'm going to move the Instant Pot just a little bit here. Tonight we're going to be making bacon bean soup. It's super good. Let's see if the reception does okay with it sitting right there. Right there. It's already tried to kick me off about five times, so. Let's just see what happens. Okay, you guys all still there? I hope so. I don't want to move you too much. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Alexis. Oh, boy, Alexis. Really? I think I know what that news is, but text me, okay? Sharon says, hey, Crystal, I'm on time. I'm so glad you guys are here. So I'm hoping this is coming through clearly. And like I said, if it is, please comment down below. It seems like it's less choppy on my end. I can move my hands without it freezing. So I'm just going to proceed forth until someone says that the video and audio sucks. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just going to keep on going. So I had a list. Here it is. So really quick, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I do have an Instagram account now. It is linked in the description box down below under connect with me. I'm super excited about this because... I'm actually starting to like Instagram. I need to figure it out a little bit more, but I'm enjoying um, the short clips because it doesn't take very much and I can post every day, which is kind of cool to be able to connect with each other a little bit more. So please check that out. It's down in the description box. If you haven't already followed me, follow me and we can go a long life together. You guys can see what I'm doing in the kitchen throughout the day, different ways to alter recipes inside my cookbook and what are we eating? So just to give you guys some ideas, I know there's also a poll up there right now was what do you want to see from me on Instagram? So if you haven't voted on that yet, please do. Um, the options were um, everyday, I think it was everyday meals, um, farm animals, garden, etc., cetera, um, or just a different thing, like getting to know me or something. So if you haven't voted on that, go over to my Instagram, the link is down below, and take that poll, okay? The other thing I wanted to say is I've gotten a few emails Everybody's so worried about Naomi, and I love that. You guys are so great. You're such a great community. Um, but I did want to say, because some people don't know the difference between what I'm doing and invasive procedures, so I just wanted to let everybody know that basically the therapist that Naomi is seeing is called a sacral, uh, sac cranial sacral therapist, and that particular therapist is basically like an advanced chiropractor. Um, and so basically... What she's doing is she's she's skilled and trained to do chiropractic of the skull, okay? So it's not invasive at all. It's just minor bone adjustments um, to get things to fall into place um, instead of being out of place from being burnt, born with kind of a rougher delivery, okay? So don't worry. We're not doing surgery. We're not doing anything major. This, the cranial sacral therapist is just another word for an advanced pediatric type chiropractor that, like I said, is skilled in the bones of the head, okay? So, nobody worry, she's gonna be okay. Or in fact, I'm gonna update you guys on how good we're doing here in just a second, but we're gonna get dinner going so it can be simmering while we're talking. Now, I'm gonna move you, we're gonna see if it cuts me off, I hope not. I might just leave you there and like angle you down. Okay, so, over there on the stove, I've got that large pot and I'm gonna move it on over. And I put four tablespoons of um, butter in here, and I already melted it. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the heat back on to medium heat. Look at that baby. You guys can kind of see her today. She's having kind of a rough afternoon. Her sister is picking up playing violin, and Naomi has decided she hates that sound. doesn't matter if it even sounds good. She hates it. So she's a little tired. So I, again, I have four tablespoons in here already melted. And I'm going to go ahead and add my onion which is one large yellow onion. If you haven't bought one of these from Walmart or a similar store, you should get one. There's an onion chopper. He can chop an onion in like less than two minutes and there's no tears and it's tiny, tiny little pieces. And it measures it out for you, which is super cool. Hey, Julie, we're like catching a live. Oh, thanks, Julie. Um, and I'm not going to be posting pictures of the baby over on Instagram just because when you post things, people can repost them and I just, I don't want her face all over the internet and go different directions with Instagram. So, um, we're just going to figure out what works good for the community. So 
All right, so I got the yellow onion that's diced into the pot there. We're going to saute it, and in the meantime, I'm going to chop up some bacon. The recipe says 10 ounces of bacon. Originally, we were going to have corn chowder this month, and this is actually our home cured and smoked bacon. But what ended up happening was, due to all the colic stuff I had happening with Naomi, which I don't think it was colic anymore, I think she was just in extreme pain, we cut out a lot of the carbs inside my diet to try and to calm it down. So anyway, we switched our menu plan, so we're not eating corn chowder anymore, so this is about almost half of a pound of bacon. The recipe says 10 ounces, so a little over half of a pound, so I'm going to use this, and then I have some uh, two cups of, this is our, our ham that we cured and smoked at home here, and I'm going to add just a little bit of this to take us up to, you know, three quarters of a pound of pork in the soup. I want to make sure we got plenty of protein in there. And I started pre-chopping my carrots as well. I was just kind of waiting for her to fall asleep here and and she finally did, so <laughs> that's good. So yeah, bacon bean soup. I also have um, behind the camera there my Instant Pot. I have already um, cooked the soaked and fermented beans. I know that sounds Complicated. If you're new here, it's not complicated. It, you can totally can soak and ferment while you're at work. You just rinse them and then you put them into the instant pot and cook them while you're at work. So it's not hard. I have six children in case you're new here. If I can do it, you can do it too. Um, it just takes a few minutes a day. And why we do that is because we want to unlock all the nutrients in those beans so it fills up your family faster and they get more uh, nutrition from the beans. So again, 10 ounces of bacon. I'm going to try and cut this the best way I can. Usually the knife that I use is not clean right now. Let's see. I'll try a different one. Um, there we go. That works better. So anyway, update on Naomi would be that um, last Wednesday we went up to Sioux Falls. And I, was, I was able to have one of my dear friends ride with me. If you're watching, you know who you are. <laughs> It was a great day. It was one of the best days that I've had in a while. Um, anyway, and we went to the appointment together, and um, the craniosacral therapist um, was kind of feeling around on her head, and she said, wow, her bones feel really good today. Um, just with some, like, minor adjustments, you should be able to go longer than a week. And so we were all excited, and we came home. That was last Wednesday, and last uh, Wednesday morning was the very last bottle Naomi ever got. So she hasn't, I haven't been pumping and she hasn't been drinking out of a bottle. We've been exclusively breastfeeding for almost a week. Um, when we got home, she took down uh, almost four ounces all by herself. So she's doing really, really good. This is that ham I already mentioned earlier. I'm just going to add probably like a half of a cup-ish. It really doesn't matter however much meat you want to put in there. The recipe doesn't call for ham, but like I said before, the bacon is a little bit on the shy side. Hey, Sharon. All right, so um, I'm just so grateful to be, I feel like we're done with our trial on this, but I don't want to declare that into the atmosphere because you all know what happens when you do that. So I'm just very, very pleased with where we're at. And I'm happy that we've made that much progress. Okay, so 10 ounces of bacon, one large yellow onion inside the pot over here. Now we're going to go ahead and add our garlic. So you want to use fresh garlic. It has more flavor. It doesn't have any of the preservatives of the already cut up kind. Um, and so we need six garlic cloves. These garlic cloves are larger than my thumbnail though. That's how I judge what a clove is. So this one's probably equal to more like two. So just in case you're new and you don't know how to handle a, a real garlic clove, because this is how I started out cooking, we just cut, cut off this little um, hard side of the garlic clove. And this is kind of old garlic, so it's actually probably just going to peel pretty easily. But if it didn't peel, um, we would try the happiest girl fire in her mouth, and it kind of gags her when she sleeps with it. So she might wake up here in a second crying. We'll just have to see. So anyway, um, I just can't believe, I feel like I've been dreaming and I feel like the nightmare has finally come to an end, if that makes sense. 
Um, for any of you moms out there who ever had to pump for a couple of months or however long, I feel you now. I've, I haven't had to pump since my first uh, baby when I was at work. Because I've been home. I've been lucky enough to be home since that child. Um, and so I don't really like pumping. I know I'm not the only woman out there that doesn't like pumping. Uh, it's been a really long two months, you guys. <laughs> so I'm happy to see it coming to a close. Um, and I've just been weighing her to make sure she's getting in at least three ounces at every feeding. Um, if I can remember to weigh her at night, I remember to weigh her at night, and I'll go ahead and weigh her and make sure that she's still taking in that. But um, she's doing really good. So we're going to go back Friday. Um, because Wednesday would have been one week, so Friday is kind of the middle point um, before the weekend. Um, and just see what the advanced chiropractor <laughs> has to say about it. But I'm hoping that we're coming up on one of our last visits up there for a while. You're okay, baby. You going to move your head? Oops. I'm going to go wash my hands just in case I have to touch her. You don't want the base anymore? Alright. There you go. Okay. You're going to sit on up a little bit? Okay. Okay. So for those of you who are wondering, I have a cloth on my chest here because her and I are both hot-blooded girls and we sweat if we touch each other while she's asleep. So I have to have a barrier between her and I or it's not good. <laughs> She's stirring a little bit. All right, I'm going to stir this over here. You're okay, Mom. So we're just looking for the bacon to get cooked and the onion to get soft and translucent. Another thing I've done ahead of time, which turned into a little bit of a mess here, is I made up some tomato paste using the um, tomato powder from Azure Standard. Um, I was going to tell you guys that even if you get on AzureStandard.com and you're not near a drop, Something like their tomato uh, powder can be shipped right to your door. So don't let that limit you ordering from Azure Standard because anything that's dry goods can come right to your door. Um, but anyway, so I just mixed the powder with water. I was letting it sit and now I have the five tablespoons of tomato paste on this plate right here ready to go. That'll be going in, in a little bit. And I had already started pre-chopping some of the carrots here because we need three cups of carrots. I'm so glad it, it, my phone finally got enough reception to do this. I was having a hard time in the beginning. I'm not sure how that's going to play for you all, but um, hopefully it mellows out. So you're just going to cut your carrots however large you like your carrots inside your soup. I have used that onion chopper to chop carrots, but I just find that it's really hard on those blades, and I don't want those blades to break. So I've done like potatoes to make hash browns and I've done like softer vegetables. But my last chopper like that broke because I was doing too many carrots um, and harder things and so I don't want to ruin another chopper. I'm so glad you guys are live tonight with me. That's awesome. And these are the Azure Standard Carrots that are the big bag that are around a dollar a pound for organic. They're the not so pretty carrots, but it's okay because, well, they're cheap, so it doesn't matter to me what they look like. Hey, William. It's not time to do milk yet, but I'll come get you when it's time. How about that? You're going to be bored, buddy. Also, if you guys follow me over on Instagram, you guys saw that today I was, yesterday I started some um, chicken broth. In my big roaster, that's my first batch of chicken broth since having Naomi. It's my first batch of chicken broth in three months, which is kind of crazy. I canned a bunch of it up before we had Naomi. Do you understand? Mm hmm Okay. If we can put this in there. Um, not right now. We're trying to cook the onion and the bacon first. Okay? Why? Um, because if you stick all the ingredients in right now, the onion won't get the onion won't get cooked all the way through. And it'll be crunchy, and Dad will not like it. So we have to wait a little bit, okay? Okay, Bunny? I put 
carrots in here? When it's time, I will I will let you put the carrots in. Yep. There you go. Okay. Um. Anyway, so I was ma I made broth, and then today I went ahead and siphoned it off, um, which is what this is over here. This is homemade broth. So it has a nice fat layer on the top. And I was just storing it in canning jars. I, I didn't can it like that. If you're planning on canning the broth, I do have a video out here on the channel on how to can chicken broth. It's very important you drain that fat off before you can it. And then I typically use it in cooking or to fatten up soups to fill up my family more. These are big carrots. And then I'm going to go back to the freezer here in just a second. I'm going to go grab our celery. We grew celery this year, but you sure can buy celery in bulk when it's on sale, like Thanksgiving. Hello. Um, buy it Thanksgiving and then go ahead and chop it up like I did my homegrown stuff. Put it in freezer bags and you've got a go-to quick pour out for already diced up celery. You can do the same thing with onions when they're on sale and the same thing with carrots when they're on sale. And you don't have to blanch any of them. Just chop, put them in a freezer bag and freeze it. I'm going to go grab that celery really, really quick. I'll be right back. Can't tell if this bag has a hole in it or not, so that'll be interesting. But this is our frozen celery. You can also buy it pre-chopped from Azure Standard and frozen already um, if you don't have time to freeze it and chop it yourself. All right, I'm gonna give the pot a stir. The weather is gorgeous here, you guys. What's it like where you are at? Um, we're supposed to get either rain or snow tomorrow, um, but I think spring is pretty much here, which is crazy to be saying that in February. So one thing to note is if you're ever cooking and some of the meat or onions kind of like slightly burn, I, I call it caramelized to the bottom of your pan, that's no big deal because we're just about to pour a liquid in. And when you pour the liquid in, that liquid actually removes that um, burnt on food from the bottom of your pan um, and it seasons your broth. So it makes your soup taste even better. So I always actually try to leave the, the ingredients in my soup at the bottom of the pot as long as possible so it does that because it just adds more of a yummy toasted flavor. I'm not saying let it get black, um, but it adds a nice um, caramelized onion type flavor to your soup. I'm wishing that I would have pulled out the camera for when we um, cured our bacon. There wasn't a ton of interest on, on YouTube. But I've had several people reach out since then uh, wondering how to do it. So kind of next year I'll probably just take the camera out even if there's not a whole bunch of interest because apparently there are still people who want to learn how to do it the old-fashioned way. And I'd like to have some content up here for when that happens. Okay, we're almost to 5,000 subscribers, which is totally crazy. Never thought I'd be have that many followers. Jackie, occasional 32 or 34 low, but highs in the 50s and lows in the 60s some days. Is that normal for you, Jackie, though, or is it earlier? Is that like normal weather for where you are? Ours is like so much warmer than what it normally is. It's kind of crazy. So my husband will be coming with me to our appointment on Friday for Naomi. Um, he hasn't been up there yet with me, and we're going to go out to... Um, I I don't eat 100% healthy all the time. <laughs> and I don't want you guys to feel judged that I'm eating better than you are all the time. It's not true. Jackie, don't ever have these highs in February. That's what I thought. Everywhere, it's just super, super warm. So... What I try to tell myself, and I'll tell everybody out there, so that all you moms don't judge yourselves, okay, is that um, I cook the very, very best I can here in the house. So I make sure that all of our grains are properly prepared. I make sure all of our beans and rice and everything is soaked and fermented. I make sure that the meals that I prepare here in the home 
are up to par. And then let's say it's been a crazy week and we want to have something and I order a Papa Murphy's pizza to go and I bake it here. That's not unheard of, okay? So don't judge yourself if you're going out to eat, etc. For my family, I try to keep it only to a maximum of once a week. Usually it's typically about twice a month for our family. And it's just usually on my really, really crazy days. So um, just give yourself some credit, give yourself some leniency. It's okay if you don't eat 100% of the time. And sometimes we go to Pizza Ranch and eat it there. Sometimes we go to other sit down restaurants and eat um, as a family. But like I said, each family has their own standard for how often you want to eat out. Um, but I just try to keep everything that we eat here at the home nutrient dense and nourishing so that when we do cheat, it's very rare and our diet at home is nice and sound foundation for cheating and going out and having fun and relaxing as a family. Okay, that being said, let's continue with the soup. I'm going to go ahead and add the, I'm going to turn on my vent first because I know this is going to steam. I'm going to add four cups of broth to the pan. I added about a cup and then I'm stopping because that cup is taking the um, caramelization stuff off the bottom of the pan. Okay, four cups. It's pretty much the same thing as when you're using um, cooking wine does the same thing to your pots. It just deglazes it or whatever they call it. I don't even know. I'm not a professional chef. Y'all know that by now. Um, so whatever it does to pull the stuff off the bottom. <laughs> okay, so Sharon says I'm definitely interested in learning how to cure bacon. Jackie says, I agree with Sharon about curing bacon. Kathy tried it and had major problems with too salty of a taste. Aha. Yeah, there's a trick for that. <laughs> I'll have to, next year when we get a, get a pork, we'll have to make sure we make a video about it. But the salt, too salty of a taste is because you want to use big chunks of salt. Okay. So not like rock salt, but not like the finest stuff that you get that you just shake out of a shaker. Um, and then you rinse it off. A lot of people don't realize that you coat it in salt and sugar and then you rinse it off after like 10 to 14 days of it being in your fridge. Um, and so if you have a really super, super fine salt, it's going to not rinse out. It's going to dissolve and go into the meat and be way, way, way too salty. So I don't buy the fine. I buy the next like medium grade salt and that's what I rub on there. And pink Himalayan salt, um, never, the, I think it's like number five pink, they call it pink salt, but it's, it has nitrates in it, it's nitrate salt. So um, I don't use that, obviously. Because if you're curing it at home, you're trying to avoid all that anyway. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my three cups of carrots approximately. And I'm increasing my heat on my burner up to high so we can get this up to a boil. Our bodies were made to detox. If we were meant to like stay at home and you know could never handle anything, we'd all be dead by now. So just give yourself grace. Know that every step, every day that you make a choice for your family that's better than yesterday, you're making a good step. No one ever got to where they are overnight. It's taken me 13 years to get here. <laughs> so, and I've got a long journey. I don't know everything. So. Just give yourself grace and do the best that you can for your family and know that that's what you're doing and move forward. Okay, uh, Jackie says, oh, Sharon says, I like the idea of 80 standard uh, three celery stalks. So I'm just going to estimate, obviously, how much of this would be three celery stalks. And we're going to put it right on in. I'm not going to move you guys any closer to the stove today because apparently the cell phone service is good. 12 inches that way, but if I move it 12 inches closer, it's no good. <laughs> and nobody wants to watch a live that keeps cutting out, so. My celery, um, and actually homegrown celery, has a lot more leaves in it than the actual um, stock. Depending on which way you um, stock. Depending on which way you grow it, grow it. So we're going to go with that for the amount of celery. So we're going to go with that 
for the amount of celery. And like I said, you can totally buy celery in bulk around Thanksgiving when it's on sale. Dice it up, put it in a freezer bag, and you have stuff for soups all winter long. Same thing with carrots. Usually carrots, celery, onions are all on sale for Thanksgiving because people are making dishes with that stuff in it. So you just stock up at that point in time, and then you have stuff for your whole year round. Okay. We've got that tomato paste I talked about earlier. If you missed it, because there's a lot more people on right now, this is the Azure Standard Tomato Powder that is mixed with water, okay? Turns right into a paste. If I were to add more water, it turns into a sauce. Way, way, way cheaper to do your tomato products this way than to buy them already canned inside the store. So check that out. It's azurestandard.com, and you're looking for the organic tomato powder. You can make tomato juice with it if you add a whole bunch of water. Um, you can take it when it's a sauce and add seasonings and make homemade ketchup. Amazing and super cheap. So that is five tablespoons of tomato paste. And since you can't see this, the broth level is just above the, um, the vegetables. I would move you closer, but every time I do, it cuts out. So we're just going to leave you sitting right there. And this is going to keep on boiling until the carrots are soft. And then we're going to add some more ingredients. Let's see, we did our celery. And then we're going to get the beans out here in just a second. We're going to throw some thyme in here as a seasoning. I feel bad because I keep smooshing her legs because they hang out. So I like to come up to something and, oop, you know, I hit her leg. <laughs> it's not a good scenario. Okay, organic thyme. We're going to go ahead and use one teaspoon. She's only small for so long, right? So I just got to remind myself she's on the front of me and I'm not pregnant anymore because, well, some days you just don't know because they're on the front of you for so long which is hilarious. Okay, so this is going to boil. In the meantime, we're gonna bring the beans out. Gotta grab a hot pad. Okay, so this is the Instant Pot liner with all of our beans in it. So basically I took, um, and just in case you're new here, I soak and ferment some beans, which is basically just submerging them in a solution for a few days. I rinse them off and I put them in gallon sized freezer bags and I freeze them. And then when I'm ready to make a meal like this one, I'm able to go ahead and measure out, in this case, I measured out um, about eight cups of those beans that were already frozen. And you could do this in the morning before you go to work. Put them in my Instant Pot, submerge them in either water or broth. In this case, I use broth. Close your Instant Pot and push the bean slash chili button and go to work. Uh, when you come back, it'll be completely naturally depressurized and ready to use in whatever recipe that you want. I do have a cookbook that has a ton of recipes using these beans. These are actually great northern beans, but you could use navy beans in place of these if you want, or really any bean, but typically your bacon bean soups are white beans. Um, so that's what these are. These are already fermented and they have um, probably a good quart of broth in here. Basically, the rule with um, soaked and fermented beans when it comes to the Instant Pot is you put your beans in, you submerge it with either water or um, broth until it just... So anyway, anyway, these are ready to go into the soup. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and get either a masher, either a masher, which I'm going to use a masher tonight, but you could also use which I'm going to use a masher tonight, but you could also use a um, immersion blender. And we're just going to mash a little bit of these beans because the white beans, they really like, they like to think, thicken up a soup when you mash them. So you can either mash them or you can blend them just a little. And that just helps to make the soup nice and creamy. Like I said, my goal isn't to smush all of them, but I want to smush some of them. I love this potato masher, by the way. <laughs> this is a uh, Target uh, 
Joseph, Joseph is the brand. Uh, potato masher. I love this. It has lasted me eight years now. Uh, it's still going, and it I just because it has a spring action, it's just so much easier to use than a regular one. Okay, I'm gonna stop with that because I don't want to get rid of all the beans, but I want that. I've been cooking all day, soup, creamy, soft bean texture. Okay. Okay, we're gonna salt the soup to taste, so I'm gonna find the salt, if I can. There it is. So we want colored salt, pink Himalayan salt, Celtic sea salt, real salt brand, any of those will work great. This is um, Azure Standards pink Himalayan salt in a real salt shaker. And I'm just gonna add a good teaspoon and a half into the soup pot over here that's boiling. That was another question I had that came in this week, which was, how do you get your family to drink broth, especially when you're doing the GAPS diet? So this is what I used to get broth in, and still use to get broth into my family. Um, it's just an organic herb sea salt, okay? If you're on like the very, very first intro stages, you technically shouldn't be eating um, herbs and stuff. So you'd have to put this like in a little tea bag, but you can still use it. Um, and this just really, really flavors the broth very, very well to be able to drink it just in a cup. Okay, I'm going to give the soup another stir and then we're going to add these beans. Oh man, I wish I could move you guys closer and show you what it looks like. It looks so yummy and thick and creamy before we haven't even added these yet. The mashed ones kind of got stuck down to the bottom. Now, once the beans are in, I, if you guys were paying attention in the beginning, I had a second quart of broth yeah. sitting there. Hey buddy, almost ready for you and your milk, okay? Um, and what that second quart of broth is for is so that you can add as much broth as you want to the soup some people like a beanier soup, some like a more brothy soup. Um, so once you get the beans in, then you can decide about how much you want to add on top of what you already have on in there. And I can say I'm probably going to add at least another two cups of broth. You ready for milk? Okay, just a minute. We'll do milk in just a minute, buddy. I'm so glad you haven't forgotten about me. It's just mommy's just trying to get this boiling so it can finish so we can eat tonight. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. Okay, so buddy, I want you to back up just a little bit because this is really boiling. In fact, mommy might turn it down just a little bit. So we don't burn anybody. Okay. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. If I didn't have a baby on the front of me, I'd probably still leave it up that high. There, you guys can kind of see it. Hopefully, it doesn't hey. cut out. So just a second. Hot. Okay. What I want you to do, are you listening? I want you to go get a shorter stool and come back. This is too tall and you're going to fall into the soup. There we go. Perfect. Now it's more like a soup, but you guys can hopefully see on camera, it's coming through clearly, hopefully, how creamy that is. So that's just going to simmer away until the carrots are cooked and then we're ready to eat. You ready for milk? Okay, I'm going to back the camera up. And we'll do milk time. Oh, you're tall. What happened to your face? Why am I falling over? You fell over? Uh, on my blue bike. On your blue bike? Why? Because I didn't know how many time to fall. Oh. I'm sorry. Did you hit the driveway or a tree? It kind of looks I like you might have hit a tree. I hit that, and, and then I hit a hobby on the driveway. Oh, do you have an owie on your legs? 
Mm-mm. No, they're gonna take this up over your head. Excuse me. All right, I'll well, get us our milk. Are you hungry or thirsty for some milk? Yep. Okay. <laughs> milk it is. So you rode your bike today? Yep, my blue bike. Yeah? When, when grandma's come over, I can ride it. Oh. Okay. So did you say your chain fell off on your bike, though? Mm -hmm. Grandpa might have to fix that. He's coming Friday. No. Dad, Mom, Bay has fixed it. Oh, no, Bay fixed it? That's nice of her. Okay. You have to wait for me. Hey, hey. <laughs> huh? No matter how old you get, you still have to clink your milk with your mom. Okay. That looks ouchy. So, just in case inquiring moms are wondering what I'm going to put on that. He's going to get a dose of cod liver oil, which maybe I'll just go get it right now. And I'll probably rub some emu oil on that. I don't want to. Yeah. Hi. Because I don't want your face to get scarred from that yucky ouchy thing. So I'll get you some color oil and then the emu oil you don't have to take. Just just the color oil. So this is what I give my kids. There's a link down below. They sell emu oil and color oil and beef liver powder, all sorts of supplements. Hey, don't drink all your milk because then you're going to be sad when this goes in your mouth. And it just comes with a syringe and you just pull out two mls. Ready? There you go. And it goes. This is the unflavored kind. They also um, sell like cinnamon flavor. Do not buy the chocolate. Sorry, blue, uh, green pastures. That is just not. <laughs> it's like a chocolate covered fish. Okay. So we do uh, fermented caliber oil that's unflavored for the kids. And then I take a cinnamon tingle one. How is your milk? It's gone, huh? I took my stir stick away. Are you having fun in school today? Was that fun? Yeah. What did you learn? I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> okay. So what else did you do today? You did school. What else? Playing. Playing, yeah. That's a busy day. That's it? Okay. Talkative tonight. He's out of here. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, I have not gotten out another video. Um, I basically took the time that I would allot to making another video for the YouTube channel and signed up for Instagram. That's a really, really funny story, by the way. So a couple months ago, I had told you guys that I was trying to set up an account on Instagram. And every time I got to where I put in my uh birthday it wouldn't go any further and i was so frustrated so i had to walk away from it well then i had naomi and things have been crazy and haven't gotten back around to it and um basically like i said that's linked down below if you're interested if you have instagram that's great if not stick here with me that's fine too it's just i'm going to be posting a lot more content over there um of just like short little um videos of what i'm making what's for breakfast what's for dinner that sort of thing so um, if you're interested, um, but anyway, I didn't get another video out and I do intend to do a video on seeds, um, because that was one of the things that quite a few of you were interested in. I think it'd be fun to do. I'm going to see if these carrots are done. Um, so anyway, I'm going to try and get that done. It really depends on how Naomi's appointment goes on Friday. If it goes well and we get to keep doing what we're doing, then I'll have extra energy to put, Ooh, they're done. That's great. Carrots are now done, so this soup is done, actually. Um, if the appointment goes well for Naomi, then I'll have extra energy to put in towards doing a video on garden seeds. So I've, it's, on my, it's on my list. They're next to my side of the bed, so I'm not going to forget, and I'll get that video out eventually. I'm going to go ahead and remove the soup from the heat because it's really bubbling, and I don't want all the beans to fall apart. There. 
Dinner's done. That's how easy that was. About 45 minute video, but we've been kicked off how many times tonight? Probably eight, maybe more like 10. So if you're still here, I really appreciate you. Um, but anyway, I will get some more content out. Another thing we have coming up is in less than two weeks, we have kidding season happening here. So depending on how that goes, <laughs> uh, if that interferes with cooking class time, um, there might have to be a different day of the week or something happening with that. So just stay tuned. Apparently my dishes are done. You know, I love the LG appliances, but I don't like how they sing to you, but with a dishwasher, I'm like, you know what? At least it's happy. It just got done cleaning my dishes. And my kids don't smile and sing when they get done doing the dishes. So it's actually kind of joyful. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I just have to see how kidding season goes. If it's crazy, um, if it cuts into Tuesday nights or something, just keep an eye out here on the channel. I'll also be posting over on Instagram um, kind of the plan. And um, keep your eye out for pre-scheduled events. Other than that, I think that's it. So thanks so much for joining me. That was bacon bean soup. Make it for your family. Give it a try. It's delicious with some sourdough bread. And I will see you guys in the next one. And hopefully I'll see most of you guys over on Instagram. I also want to say thank you so much for sharing my videos. So two weeks ago, we made the creamy um, white, what was it? Creamy rosemary white beans or something. That video has over 800 views. That is the highest we've ever had on any cooking class. And like I said a million and one times before, this is not monetized. My joy is simply coming from 800 people seeing how easy it is to make a meal for their family that's nutrient dense. And also that particular cooking class did cover the white beans and the soaking and fermenting. So it's a good introduction for a lot of people who be coming into the channel to learn that, oh my, we should be properly preparing our beans and it's not that hard. So um, anyway, thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys sharing my videos, jumping on live, commenting down below and engaging with each other and me. Um, so anyway, thanks for being there. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for helping me to grow the channel and the awareness of nutrient dense foods for the next generation because we want kids just like Naomi to grow up well nourished and able to flourish with their lives. So you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys on the next one.